We have enough water in the state. We're just not managing it properly. And it seems the time frame is moving very slow. We need to build more sites reservoirs. I think it's an urgent problem. Sites could be great for the environment, great for agriculture, great for cities. There is no alternative to having water if we're going to be feeding our people. I just want you to keep that in mind. The sites reservoir project provides a tremendous amount of benefit in regards to flood control. We really do need to develop this sites reservoir. And I don't know if you've had an opportunity to look at your audience tonight, but they're discouraged. When we voted for uh, Prop 1, uh, the impression was that we were voting for projects for sites reservoir. As I look at what's, what site, sites dam is all about, and when I read this, to me, that's, that's a no-brainer. I hope when it comes time for the application process to get started, that you consider Sites Reservoir as the number one project alternative to be funded under this bond. Sites was something that was proposed you know, more than 50 years ago when Dwight D. Eisenhower was president. I think a lot of people are rightfully frustrated that we didn't make the investment a long time ago to improve our water storage capacity. So there's definitely a lot of frustration that, hey, this process, we passed this water bond, let's get this done. There is no doubt about it. People here in Northern California are chomping at the bit to get started building sites. But nothing comes easy when $2.7 billion is on the line. The Sites Project Authority has taken the reins on working to get Sites Reservoir built, but they are at the mercy of a process, a process that was written into the language of the Prop 1 water bond, and that process stipulates that applications will not be received until the first quarter of 2017. And that has people around here frustrated. As you saw at the top of this video, back in October, those speakers took the opportunity to voice their concerns to the California Water Commission. So who the heck is the California Water Commission? They're a state agency of nine people appointed by the governor to oversee new state policies and regulations, approve construction projects, and hold regular public forums, all pertaining to California water projects and issues. The role of the commission has evolved since its inception in the 1950s, but right now, in the context of Sites Reservoir, they are possibly the most important organization in the state. Its primary function going forward is going to be to approve projects for this $2.7 billion uh, for system-wide improvements in California. Essentially, when the Water Commission ultimately uh, blesses the disbursement of that money, that is, the, uh, that is the decision that matters. Basically, if this basin is ever to be dammed up, it will be because the Water Commission determined it's the best use of the Prop 1 bond money. So how do they decide if sites is worthy? The Water Commission right now is, is formulating its regulations and its application criteria. Um, and they've come out with a draft form of that that's now starting to circulate. That draft is supposed to be finalized by the end of the year. And once it is, it will be go time for project applicants to research and prove how their storage project is the best fit for what the Water Commission has laid out. We really wanted to get all the public input we could as possible up front so that we would get the draft regulations as close to the final regulations as possible. And I'd be surprised if we see anything that's too different, that we haven't already discussed and kind of incorporated. For now, projects are focusing on what's in the draft to get a jump start on things. The site's project authority is already off and running. I think it's pretty clear what we need to do in terms of putting together the application. And so we're working on the engineering uh, we're working on the environmental. What you need to know, you're going to hear a lot of technical stuff tonight. Back at that October meeting, the public was presented some details as to what's in the draft. The state is going to fund up to 50% of projects, and they will be funding the public benefit side of those projects. In order to get the public money, it has to have public benefits, and the public benefits are listed in the water bond as either ecosystem improvements, recreation, water quality improvements, flood control benefits, um, or emergency response. If Sites Basin becomes Sites Reservoir, it is capable of meeting all five of those public benefit requirements. Let's start with ecosystem improvements. 
Probably the biggest is the ability to help the cold water pool at Shasta and at Oroville by essentially through exchange process. Water could be used from sites in lieu of coming directly out of Shasta to increase the cold water pool. More available water means greater success at keeping the Sacramento River at the optimal temperature for wildlife. What about water quality? The biggest impact that uh, sites can make is helping to contribute flows for uh, spring or fall. Sites can release water to help freshen up the delta. Right now, reclamation um, pretty much uses Folsom as the first responder when they think there's uh, a potential out of compliance. They need a higher, you know, higher level of reliability coming out of Folsom. With sites in the system, we could be releasing some of that water and there'd be higher water supply, higher water levels in Folsom. Sites Reservoir would also provide new outdoor recreation opportunities and some flood protection measures. As for emergency response? The Commission is looking at broadening that definition a little bit with uh, if there is a declared emergency like this year, could, uh, could water be made available for say disadvantaged communities or areas who, that went dry? Suffice it to say, Sites has that covered too. It meets all of those public benefits criteria and I think most people that you would talk to would say Sites lines up very well to meet that public benefits test. Half of the money that we're going to allocate to pay for the public benefit portion of any project, half of it, a minimum of half of it has to be for ecosystem restoration. A project that is funded by Proposition 1, Chapter 8, must provide measurable improvements to the delta or delta tributaries, to the ecosystems of the delta or delta tributaries, and that's a key eligibility requirement. Well, for sites, that's great because we're north of the delta and sites can show that, you know, water can be used to help with flows uh, to the delta and can help improve the delta. We will meet that no problem. That's really a relative term, you know, measurable. Uh, I think clearly if you use the numbers of 200 to 250,000 acre feet of public benefit, um, that is, in, that is independent of the water user's benefit, that is measurable. 200,000 acre feet released to help uh, manage water quality and ecosystem in the Delta, I, I have to believe that would be measurable. And one of the things that the Commission or the Prop 1 asked for is the highest return on, on investment for, for the public benefits. So in that process, they have to look at essentially a portfolio of projects to say, which group of projects is going to maximize that re return on investment. And that's the basis for the competitive process concept. The duty of the Water Commission is to get the best bang for the buck out of those $2.7 billion. So the process has been structured in a way which forces applicants to show how they can best provide those public benefits to the state. And they're going to evaluate projects competitively and they're going to rank them against other projects. So uh, we could see many different projects proposed in, that, in, in the application process, but those are going to be weighed by the Water Commission and say, hey, which ones really meet the criteria under the water bond? And that's where we think site stacks up a lot better than a whole host of other projects. It's a little uh, risky to talk about specific projects, uh, but I would say that uh, sites is a pretty well-developed uh, concept, and uh, there's a lot of not just support, but there's a lot of rational basis for it. So in terms of uh, storage projects, surface storage projects in particular, I think it's definitely one that's going to be considered quite uh, carefully. My takeaway from all of this is, Sites has everything that the Commission has laid out as key eligibility requirements. Imagine 200,000 acre feet of water sitting in Sites ready to be used for public benefit in a multitude of ways at a moment's notice. It's taken 50 years for us to get to where we are now. Has the time finally come? If there's any time it's ever gonna happen, it's right now. And so for me, I'm gonna take the opportunity to make sure it happens.